This has been something that has been asked me time and again. A lot of authors want to know what is that magical time, that day, that hour in which I should publish my book through KDP to Amazon. Well, we're continuing on more into the Amazon KDP series. Just when you thought I was done with this topic? No, not at all, because there are so many questions. So make sure that you stay tuned to today's podcast. What's happening? It's Dale here, and I'm just tickled to death that you took a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me to talk about my favorite thing in self-publishing. Hey, just a quick shout out to the fine folks over at Miblar, the sponsors of the podcast channel. Miblar is a book cover design company for indie authors, and their mission is to help each and every author turn their book cover into their number one marketing tool. That's why they keep their prices affordable and provide authors with such benefits as unlimited revisions, first book cover design concept in just about five days, no prepayment for photo manipulated book covers, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you aren't happy with their work, you just request for a full refund. And for more details about my preferred book cover design services, Miblart, visit our affiliate link at dalelinks.com slash Miblart. That is M-I-B-L-A-R-T and use the coupon code DALE10. That's DALE10 for 10% off your next order at Miblart. Again, dalelinks.com slash Miblart. Now, when I first broke into the business, the big theory about launching books, it was, I'm going to simplify this because there was a lot of times that people had their theories and there was exactly that. And that was a different time back in say 2014, but they always believed the best time to launch a book was between Tuesday to Thursday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that was when you went ahead and published. And then you would promote leading up to something like that. And you know, they said sales are lighter on Fridays through Mondays, but I tested that theory out a number of times with my fitness books. I just try because I was like, you know, I was publishing so frequently. I thought, let me go ahead and just test this out. Same amount of sales, same amount of sales, same amount of sales. You see where I'm going with this? So there is a lot of like marketing that went behind this. And so sometimes that day and time didn't matter as much as what the marketing I was putting into this. Now, does this theory that used to work back then still hold up for some people, but for most, not really. Now, where did this theory come from? This theory originally came from when you would run a five day free promo through the KDP select program. And you would run that five day free promo on your book Wednesday through Sunday. So like you would launch on, let's say that Wednesday, put it on a free promo, like right out the gate and then jack up the price thereafter. Now that free promo, of course, people are getting thousands upon thousands upon thousands of downloads. And if you just stay consistent with that, then after it goes into the paid model, it kind of trips up the algorithm and the algorithm goes, oh my gosh, this is getting a lot of downloads. And you would start to see a lot of organic traffic being pushed towards that. Sadly, it's not as effective as it once was before. So you could do something like this, but you're really taking a huge gamble, especially if you're running your book for free that you just launched. I mean, just imagine that, you know, you get tens of thousands of free downloads but only like say three books after the free promo is done. Now there's a lot of marketing and promotion. Of course, you got to put into it before, during, and after. Why doesn't it work anymore, folks? Quite frankly, Amazon's matured since then. Many parts of the platforms have changed and these unintentional benefits just kind of disappeared. Let's face it. Amazon didn't set out to make certain days of the week to work best for selling products. They want all days of the week to sell. Now, of course, there are exceptions to the rule, you know, Prime Day and Cyber Monday and those type of holidays. Now, the biggest mistake most authors do is they'll say, well, I'm done, let's publish. Okay, I just have to say, slow down. Slow down, hold your horses. You're in way too much of a rush. It's great that you got your book done. And I'm so happy that your beta readers are just ignited about it. And maybe you even have the advanced readers in place. Hopefully you do. If you didn't, you're publishing too soon. Get advanced readers in order. 
you have to understand to publish your title on a specific date is not always going to work, all right? Putting it out immediately is not going to work. So yeah, you might want it on your mom's birthday, but don't rush to it. So I've had many people that come to me and they get a consult, uh, consultation and they say, oh, um, I'm looking to go ahead and publish this book in about two weeks because it's my mom's birthday. And this is not making any slide on the person here, folks. Um, and I'm always like, okay, what marketing promotion have you done so far? None. Okay. You need some more time to bake in the marketing and promotion for your book. It is absolutely critical if you want to see any sales or even get any number of readers, you have to be deliberate about things. Give yourself some time for that book marketing. Again, before, during, and after. It doesn't always have to cost money, folks. There's so many ways you can do this. Now, there are two ways to time your launch. You, you find your day of the week. You want to shoot for it. Maybe your mother's birthday does work out. Or maybe it's a specific holiday that is relevant to your book. Okay, great. First one you can do is pre-orders. Now on KDP's platform, unfortunately, pre-orders are only available for eBooks right now. And they really haven't said anything about doing pre-orders for print books just yet. But you can use Ingram Spark for pre-orders on paperback and hardcover. I know this is completely off the KDP platform. But just so you know that the option is available. The catch is, as soon as you do a pre-order through Ingram Spark, Ingram Spark distributes over to Amazon. It'll have your ISBN associated to it. So when you try to publish the print book through KDP, what's going to happen? You're going to say, that's already published over here. Give us a different ISBN. And so then you got an issue here. So you lose that ability to have your book printed through KDP. Now, there's ways that you can jump through some hoops. If you get a hold of KDP support and Ingram Spark support, they'll be able to switch all those things after the launch, but it just gets so stinking messy. And you know what? Don't do duplicate uploads. Don't go with like, okay, well, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and just do a different ISBN, but it's the same book and then it becomes confusing for your customers. Now, the pros of that is you get the pre-order option over Ingram Spark. The con is, well, you lose the higher royalty available through KDP. All right, I do have to touch on audiobooks, and I know audiobooks is not covered on Amazon KDP, but I just kind of wanted to just rope them in as well. Um, so they don't have any ties to KDP, but when you're looking at publishing at the right time, chances are very likely you want to get your audiobooks in order. ACX does not have pre-order available. Now, ACX is almost like uh, the sister company to KDP. Well, it is. And they're kind of like, yeah, there's no pre-orders. Other platforms, so like Find Away Voices, does offer pre-orders. Now, these pre-orders will only go to certain platforms that support that feature. So for instance, when I went to launch one of my self-publishing books, it um, got over on pre-sale on Google Play Books. I thought that was a hoot. That was really awesome. So yeah, just think about that when you're going to time your, your, your launch just right. Think about both of those platforms, not just KDP, but thinking about the distribution of audiobooks. I see a lot of people putting audiobooks as an afterthought. It's a good idea to try to get that going. I understand some of you may not have the budget to justify getting a fiction book, especially one that's really deep, like an epic novel, because that's going to cost sometimes tens of thousands of dollars. Get it. I understand. But uh, the other way is to do this is just publish anything in advance. You know, you're going to shoot for like a soft launch day. Um, think of it kind of like your buffer time. So let's just say that you want to launch your book on, you know, a hard launch. You have a launch party and things like that. You have it set for Wednesday, the uh, September 7th. Well, then today is when you're going to go ahead and hit that publish. I say allow 24 to 72 hours for KDP to process your ebook and your print book. Now, uh, the caveat for print books is it can be slower. The vetting process takes a little bit longer for them sometimes. If you find it takes any longer than that two to three days, just reach out to support and just mention something to them. Now, the pro of using this particular feature is there's less stress about a specific day, more about the process of making that available on a given launch day because there's some people that really do want to have it on a specific anniversary and that's totally fine. Now, the cons... 
This can work against you because once the book goes live on the platform, the algorithmic clock is ticking. Now, I've talked about this algorithmic clock. It's a 30-day window. It's kind of like a short love affair Amazon have, has with your brand new product. If your book starts to sell in some capacity, especially consistently, it's going to rank in a special category, which used to be called hot new releases. Now they just call it new releases. And it's those eBooks and print books that have been available on the market for less than 30 days that are performing the best out of that crop. So this means that it's just more of a discoverability feature and as well as a recommendation feature that it gets pushed out to additional Amazon users. So if you start to launch something, let's say you do a soft launch today, and then it hard launches, say, Wednesdays when you're like, hey, this is official. This is when I'm going to make it public. The problem is you've got about two days of no sales. And this can work against you. And it will work against you because they're kind of like, they came to the party, but they didn't bring anybody with them. Yeah, 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 we're good. So just fair warning, if you're the type of person that just does something like that, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It, it is the less stressful model. Now, here's a few thing, key things to kind of consider here, folks. I've already said this a few times, but I think it bears worth in repeating that I say it's, you got to focus on the time to promote. You can't just simply just go ahead and expect sales or results based on finding the right keywords or getting the right cover or getting the right copy. You can get all that stuff dialed in. That's great. Fantastic. But you got to bring people to the party. Because that's how Amazon really functions. They want to see that you're bringing people to their platform and buying your book. The more that you can get doing that, the better. Now, the point of book marketing, and why it's just something that you are forever saddled with unless you hire someone to do this. By the way, I'm not the hireable person, all right? Get consistent sales. That's literally what it comes down to. Get yourself as visible as possible in every avenue as possible and get consistent sales. That's what they love. Now, remember, if one avenue doesn't serve you, don't do it. Don't do it. For instance, I'm terrible at Facebook ads. I'm not going to lie. I've tried a few times, lost a lot of money. I, that's not a model for me. Maybe I just need to have somebody who teaches me a little bit better, but nonetheless, that's not an avenue for me. But it is very successful other people. But I want you to also remember this. If you're going to publish a book, and you're going to really put an effort into your marketing plan. Give yourself at least a 90-day head start. I know it's, it's, you're probably going crazy right now. I am too. Trust me. I am sitting on a number of publications right now that I would just love to do this. But I want to give myself time to market and promote this. That way it is successful and it has something that sustains over the long term. So 90 days is a minimum that I say to authors. Take that time. Market and promote it. Now, here's something very interesting, and I'm not sure if you are in my Discord community at all. If you're not part of Discord, what are you doing with yourself? You're like, I don't Discord. Yes, you do. You do now. Go to dailylinks.com slash Discord. Join our community there where it's authors chatting with authors. Now, we were discussing the best timing for publishing. Now, veteran author and illustrator and future guest here of the Self-Publishing with Dale podcast, James Lee, shared how horror books perform best between August and October for him. And I thought that was super interesting because this actually comes also by way of a good friend of mine, Thomas A. Bradley. Thomas was talking about he started doing ads around October last year and his books just exploded. As soon as October had finished, though, he wasn't seeing the same results because less people were looking for those types of books. Now, you can see that that timing would work for this particular niche. And it is definitely something I'm planning to do for my Kindle Vela launch because it is a horror series. I actually was planning originally being a beginning of August and then I was like, you know what, I need a month. That's all I really needed. You know, I could have launched in September. I could probably still. But I was like, October seems like the perfect time and I don't want to do it any later. So that's why I went ahead and did that because it's proven. People are looking for that scare. They're looking for something that, you know, will really trip their trigger when it comes to horror, you know, stuff. So think about your niche and how it relates to given points in the year. So when I was a fitness author, you know what time that I sold the most books? Typically right around at the beginning of January and going into spring break. 
right in those areas. Like the first portion of the year, always just crushed it with sales. It was amazing. New Year's resolutions. That's really what it comes down to. People want to lose weight. What if you've got like a holiday theme book? Well, think about launching that around October and December. Now, you also need to think about dates that you should avoid. And this is going to be common sense, or you can even just ask around. Holidays like Christmas or the U.S. Thanksgiving Day or the 4th of July, or even just look at holidays in the region in which you're trying to sell the most books in. If you're aware of those holidays, you may want to avoid them because sometimes people aren't looking to buy things over on Amazon and they're going to take the day off. There are rare exceptions to this rule. Rare. If you were to want to launch, say on Christmas Day, it means the world to you that you want to go ahead and do that. Sure, but you better put a lot of marketing behind that. Hey, folks, um, before I give my final thoughts on all this, I want to share, of course, real quick about MibleArt. Another thing that makes MibleArt different from their competitors is they provide authors with the book cover designs for free, the ideas for free, if you will. And if you want to envision your book cover ahead of time, that's it. And then you can make the order. Now, MibleArt's designers always analyze the genre and market to make sure the book cover design will fit the genre and your reader's expectations. That's the most important thing. One more details, folks. Go over to dalelinks.com slash MibleArt. That's M-I-B-L-A-R-T. And use the coupon code DALE10. Let me go ahead and just summarize my thoughts when it comes to all this. When you go going to publish your book, you can pick that time. You can have it all laid out in your mind like the perfect scenario. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. You can go ahead and launch and have fun with it. But if you're expecting some type of results, if you're saying to yourself, when is the best time to publish, then it would mean to me that you're probably wondering, when's the best time for me to publish that'll get the most sales? Your market's going to know the answer to that. How do you reach your market? Well, you got to actually promote your books. Set at least 90 days out on your next book, all right? As soon as that final draft is done, you got it formatted, give yourself at least three months. You're going to look into arranging book promotions. It could be you know, things like group promos. It could be newsletter swaps. It could be uh, guest blog tours, if you will, those type of things. Doesn't matter what it is. Just get all those things done ahead of time and stick to your guns with whatever date you're going to do. Now, folks, there's no secret day or time that'll bring you success. Only you're going to be able to find that out, what's going to work for you. There's no one on any single podcast or platform that's going to be able to give you the definitive answer to when is the best time to publish for your particular book and for your particular audience. You're just going to have to test that out. It's all about building awareness around that date that you selected, sticking to it, and being really consistent with that marketing. Hey folks, this Amazon KDP series is not over just yet because in this very next week, we're going to be talking about one of the most trickiest things when it comes to self-publishing. That's pricing. There are pricing strategies, some good, some bad, some of them worth considering. We're going to go ahead and review some of those in next week's podcast. So, hey, to get advanced access to all these podcasts, visit dalelinks.com slash YouTube podcast one week before the audio content publishes. That's right. I go live on my YouTube channel for the podcast where I get to chat with each and every single one of you and I answer questions. It's always a good time. Till later, this has been Self Publishing with Dale and I will chat with you next week. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Special shout out to my channel members for both the podcast channel and the main channel. Without your support, some projects we do at Self-Publishing with Dale would be much harder to fund. If you want to contribute to the cause, visit dalelinks.com slash memberships for details and get your on-screen shout out at the end of each broadcast. Till later, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale and I'll 